As a manager with a few years of development experience, I often have junior developers or interns come to me to try and understand why their code is not behaving as they expect. When coding in React, that often stems from a lack of understanding of how you state behaves. So here are six mistakes that I've seen on the developer's journey to understanding how you state works. Mistake number one, not enough state. This was the first mistake made by a very junior developer who hadn't understood yet when a React component function is called. He had changed a variable in the onClick callback and then was wondering why the change was not taken into account on the screen. As a rule, anything external to the application should be stored somewhere, be it the fact that a user has clicked or the return from an API call. You need to store this in the state, I told him, otherwise it won't be remembered when the application re-renders. Mistake number two, too much state. The next mistake was a step up from the previous one by the same guy and a pendulum swing in the other way. He was so intent on ensuring that everything was safely stored that he also included calculated values that were simply the result of other states. Of course, if it was simply a question of messy code, he might not have been looking for help. But the display was only being updated every other time he clicked. Looking through the code, I saw he was doing something like this. If condition set score, score plus one, if score is bigger than zero, set button active true. In the code above, score hasn't changed between the two lines because we're in the same render frame. Moreover, the second line was then storing something which could then which could simply be inferred from the state variable, which is why the display was not being updated. I, you don't need to store everything, I told him. Logic that you can infer from other state variables doesn't need to be stored. Mistake number three, updating the same state several times. At another point in his code, my friend had something which looked like this. If condition set score, score plus one. And then a few lines later, if condition two, set score, score plus one. Now the problem was occurring where the state was not being updated between the two lines, which was causing other problems. One way around this might have been to create a proxy variable that we would only update at the end. However, the state update function allows us to pass a function that allows us to manipulate the state with its future state since the state updates are batched asynchronously. So to do something like if condition set score previous fat arrow previous plus one, and then a few lines later set score previous fat arrow previous plus one. And there's a point I didn't raise with him because he's not quite there yet. It's the fact that when a state has interdependent variables which need to be updated in a coordinated or non-trivial way, it's best to use user reducer, but he's not there yet. Now, mistake number four was redefining too much in the render. A few days later, he was back. He had a form where he was convinced he was doing everything right, and yet the state was being reinitialized every time he entered data into the form. Now, at this point, I want to make it clear that this is a person who is both very bright and very nice. But he had just started learning React, so he's making pretty much every single mistake that there is to be made. I was starting to doubt the wisdom of making him develop his application using React. But it was an internship, and he'd come to learn. And experience is often simply the sum of our past mistakes. So by that standard, everything was going very well. <laughs> He had taken to heart my advice about recalculating stuff that didn't need to be stored. But he'd been a little bit too enthusiastic about it all. The conversation went something like this. So wait, where does this component start? So he said, well, it's right at the top, here. And, and where does it end? I can't find the end. It's here at the bottom of the file. So what's this component in the middle? It's the functions and constants I've defined and the component for the HTML form because I need the state in this component to be shared with the main component. Hopefully he didn't see the look of despair. I'm pretty sure it must have been showing on my face. All the constants and all the functions that just provide logic without manipulating the states, they can be moved out of the component to a separate file. You can just import your entry points and use them, I told him. And as for the form component, in fact, you're redefining it in the main component, every single frame, Every single frame, we're just recreating the component. So you're actually showing a new component 
whenever anything changes this no surprise that the state is not being kept so we ended up doing a lot of refactoring on that bit of code mistake number five was relying solely on initial props to define a state this one i must confess i've personally been guilty of i'd created a component which showed a progress bar based on the props i was passing down to it so it was storing its state like this const progress set progress equals use state props in it of course the problem with this is that any change in the props won't affect the state once the first initialization is done there are two possible solutions which depend on what exactly has been done in the component if the component doesn't have any internal logic or any internal state that updates you don't actually need to store that as a state um, in my specific case I did need to use the state so I used use effect and uh, did a const progress set progress equals use state props in it and then I had to use a use effect set progress with props in it which and then put a condition on props in it for it to update when whenever props in it was change, changed mistake number six is updating the state with a mutated object this one is a classic mistake which stems from a lack of understanding of how objects work in JavaScript and more specifically the fact that mutating objects doesn't trigger react's change detection this is because object assignments is by reference when you assign of an object to a variable you're actually just storing a pointer to the object in your variable so two variables can be pointing to the same objects for example if we have let a equals name Bob and let B equal a if we change the name on B it actually changes the name on a as well so here a equals B so a dot name is Alice in react term this means that doing something like this won't update the display because the value of the state variable doesn't actually change it's always pointing to the same object so if we do const state set state use state score zero and then the on click we do state dot score is is plus one set state state that's not going to work the solution of course other than using a scalar in the example that's above but bear with me this is just for the example is to create a copy of the state for example with the spread operator or by declaring a new object so if we do const state set state equals use state score zero and then const on click we do set state we open the brackets dot 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 state score equals score plus one now although it was a rocky road my colleague had fun learning all about react and i'm pretty sure i made at least as many mistakes as he did on my road to learning react and i sometimes cringe when i see old code of mine and to be perfectly honest i actually gained a lot from the experience of teaching him explaining how things work is a great way to keep learning and a gratifying experience and so this is what this channel is all about if you want to learn more if you're interested in finding out more about uh, code react stuff feel free to subscribe and to like the video